Good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, for coming. We'll start with uh, short opening statements by the Secretary General and by the President. Secretary General. Mr. President, uh, welcome back uh, to Brussels. Um, our meeting today uh, reflects NATO's and uh, your commitment uh, to our partnership. It shows that we are and will remain committed uh, to the South Caucasus uh, region. Azerbaijan is a country of pivotal importance uh, for uh, Europe's energy security and to peace and stability um, in the Caucasus. Azerbaijan is also a valuable and important partner uh, for NATO. Uh, we appreciate the steadfast support uh, provided by your troops uh, in Afghanistan. We also appreciate the political support uh, to NATO operations uh, through overflight and uh, transit lines. And we are grateful uh, for the general's contributions you are making uh, to the training uh, of the Afghan security forces. Mr. President, I strongly welcome uh, your decision to continue supporting Afghanistan uh, in the new mission we are planning to uh, train, advise, and assist uh, the Afghan security forces after 2014. This shows your clear commitment to contributing to Euro-Atlantic uh, security. Today we discussed how to strengthen uh, nato azerbaijan cooperation even further. We are determined to reinvigorate uh, our political dialogue, including on strategic issues such as uh, energy security and uh, counter-terrorism. Continuing reform is also of importance uh, to Azerbaijan, and NATO will continue to assist you. I believe we can deepen our dialogue and cooperation across the spectrum of our partnership. This month, we mark the 20th anniversary of our Partnership for Peace program. Our Partnership for Peace is founded on a commitment to democratic values and principles. Azerbaijan has been a staunch member of the program since its beginning. Mr. President, we have a strong framework uh, for dialogue and cooperation, and today we agreed that we will continue to build a solid long-term partnership. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General. Thank you for invitation. I'm very glad to be back to NATO and to continue our discussions on the strategic dialogue between NATO and Azerbaijan. This is my fifth visit to NATO headquarters, so this shows the level of cooperation and during the years of cooperation, these 20 years of our membership to the Partnership for Peace program, our relations elevated to the level of strategic cooperation. Also, I remember, Mr. Secretary General, your visit to Azerbaijan in 2012 and our discussions. Today we continue discussions on the broad range of issues of our cooperation. As Secretary General mentioned, we discussed issues related to our participation in ISAF. Uh, we will continue to be committed to the security of Afghanistan in the post-2014 period. Uh, today, almost 40% of non lethal cargo to Afghanistan are crossing the territory of Azerbaijan. And uh, the route through Azerbaijan is the most reliable and safe route. So we will continue our efforts in order to promote peace and security in our region. At the same time, we also participated in the past in peacekeeping operations in Kosovo. And our participation in peacekeeping operations of NATO uh, is an important part of our cooperation. We cooperate on counterterrorism. We uh, are grateful to NATO for support in the reforms of our armed forces. And our armed forces are being transformed to NATO standards. 
Uh, also, we implement, uh, with assistance of NATO, including financial assistance, the uh, projects of demining in Azerbaijan. And Azerbaijan, um, at the same time, is contributing to Afghan National Army Trust Fund. We already contributed one million euro and pledged for another million euro. And today, I'd like to uh, say that we will contribute one million euro more to the Afghan National Army Trust Front, and we consider this as our contribution to security, peace in Afghanistan. At the same time, we will continue to provide trading, training uh, for Afghans in our uh, border security academy, defense academy, national security academy, and diplomatic academy. I think that the training and assistance in reconstruction of Afghanistan will be additional contribution from Azerbaijan. We also discussed today the situation in the Southern Caucasus. Um, the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan is a major threat to regional stability and security. We need to find the soonest resolution to the conflict based on the international law and relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions. Less than a month ago, Azerbaijan signed a uh, project which is considered to be the project of 21st century, the construction of the transportation infrastructure to bring Azerbaijani gas to Europe will start soon, and Azerbaijan takes uh, responsibility and initiative to implement this project on time. That will be the project of energy diversification, energy security, energy cooperation, and that will be the biggest infrastructure projects of Europe. And uh, this project will need additional coordination of efforts of the countries and companies uh, who participate in this project. And also we will need, of course, the due protection of the critical energy infrastructure of Azerbaijan in order to deliver the project on time. So cooperation between NATO and Azerbaijan successfully continues. Today with the Secretary General, we also discussed the future prospects of this cooperation, how can we deepen this cooperation and to find new forms for our relationship in the future. And we want to be in the future also the close and reliable partner to NATO. I'm sure that will be the case. So thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General. Azer Azerbaijani media. Nasib Mukhtar of Azerbaijan Television. My question is to Secretary, Mr. Secretary General. Um, as you already mentioned, Azerbaijan NATO relations are, are developing successfully, and that today's meeting is uh, another contribution to these relationships. How do you see the future prospects of our partnership? Thank you. Um, as I said, we already have a well functioning partnership, but I also see potential uh, for further developing uh, our uh, partnership. Um, one thing uh, is um, operations, uh, as the President mentioned, uh, is of utmost importance uh, that we uh, further develop our ability uh, to, to work and operate together, that our armed forces can work and operate together so that we can um, jointly participate uh, in peacekeeping uh, operations. Uh, and that leads me to a second point, um, continued reform, reforms of the armed uh, forces. That's an area where we, NATO has a lot of expertise and we have already an excellent cooperation with Azerbaijan. I see that cooperation um, continue uh, to uh, further develop. Um, uh, of course, energy security uh, is an issue uh, of strong uh, common uh, interest. Um, there are strategic aspects of that, there are security aspects uh, of that, so that's also an area where we can further develop uh, our partnership. And finally, let me mention what I would call a group of uh, concrete practical cooperation uh, uh, projects. Uh, for example, uh, we uh, cooperate uh, with the Azerbaijan uh, National Mine Action Center to help uh, remove uh, huge quantities of unexploded ordnance and free up hundreds of hectares uh, of, of land. And, and this is one of the biggest such projects uh, in the world, and it is of real benefit to the people of Azerbaijan. 
So that's an, a concrete example of practical cooperation that could also be uh, further uh, developed. Radio for Europe. Rick Josephic, Radio for Europe. Two questions to the President. Um, how optimistic are you about your upcoming meeting with your Armenian counterpart on Nagorno-Karabakh? Um, and also a second question. Last time you were here in Brussels, you said that there are no political prisoners in Azerbaijan. Uh, Mr. Mamadov and Mr. Mamadli are still in jail. Do you still maintain that this is a fact, that you don't have political prisoners? Thanks. Yes, of course. Uh, and this also is confirmed by the decisions of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Last December, there was a broad discussion in the Council of Europe about this issue and the resolution which was uh, launched by some members of the Assembly with respect to the issue of political prisoners uh, in Azerbaijan failed. The majority of Assembly did not support that resolution and actually that means that what I said last time here in the European Commission that there are no political prisoners in Azerbaijan is also confirmed by one of the most important uh, institutions of uh, of Europe and of the world. Azerbaijan is a member of the Council of Europe for more than 10 years. We are members of European Court of Human Rights and a priori they cannot be political prisoners in our country. If somebody is uh, uh, treated in a not a fair way, there is always a chance to apply to European Court and we are complying with the decisions of European Court. And also I'd like to say that uh, um, there are no definitions of political prisoners. We think that the definition of uh, political prisoners, if adopted by European Parliament or by Council of Europe, would be a good idea. Then it will be very easy to identify who is political prisoner and who is not. So I, say, I think that the best answer to your question is the decision of Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, January 2013. On the issue related to Karabakh settlement, uh, we want to be optimists because it's a long time since the conflict started and a long time since our lands are under occupation. It's 20 years. And uh, resolutions of um, United Nations Security Council demanding unconditional and immediate withdrawal of Armenian troops from our territory are not implemented by Armenia. And this is a brutal violation of international law. Nagorno-Karabakh is an integral part of Azerbaijan, recognized by the whole world as an integral part of Azerbaijan. As you probably know, seven regions beyond the administrative borders of Nagorno-Karabakh are also under occupation for 20 years and a million people became homeless due to Armenian aggression. My last meeting with Armenian president uh, probably was more optimistic than the previous one. And there was a long period of stagnation in negotiation pro process because of uh, unwillingness of Armenia to negotiate. Still, we have um, doubts whether Armenian side is sincere in the process of negotiations or whether they want just to continue to uh, maintain the status quo. Though the Minsk Group co-chairs countries' presidents made it very clear that status quo is unacceptable and we consider it as a serious message to Armenia because in order to change the status quo, they need to start the occupation of our territories. We will see. We gave instructions to our foreign ministers. Uh, they met already since our meeting in Vienna and hopefully they will meet later, maybe this month or next month. And we will see where, to what degree Armenia is sincere in the process and uh, hopefully if uh, realistic assessment in Armenia prevails, we can find a resolution pretty soon. One final question, Azerbaijan. Uh, yes. Um, my name is Volgar Sida from Azerbaijan State Telegraph Agency. And my question is to Mr. Secretary General. Over the uh, recent years, negative tendencies uh, like uh, the violent use of force against uh, peaceful demonstrations, limitations on uh, freedom of expression, uh, discrimination of migrants are unfortunately growing in Europe and including uh, NATO member states. When even a small incident happens in Azerbaijan, Europe immediately reacts. Do we think it's a double standard approach? Thank you. No, I don't think there is anything uh, like a double uh, standard. Um, 
um, we have ongoing critical domestic debates in all uh, NATO countries about uh, uh, political uh, questions. And uh, in our partnerships uh, with um, uh, uh, other countries, uh, we base our dialogue uh, poor, on a, a certain set uh, of fundamental uh, principles. And uh, it is an integrated part uh, of our uh, partnerships uh, that we discuss in an open and frank uh, atmosphere uh, the compliance uh, with those uh, principles. So you shouldn't consider that a double standard, but actually uh, that we take each other seriously. We have ongoing critical debates um, in our own countries, and we have similar debates uh, with uh, our partners because we respect our partners, and uh, we would like to strengthen our partnerships. Um, and to that end, we also need uh, a free and open uh, dialogue. And uh, I foresee uh, such a free and open dialogue between the President and uh, uh, the NATO Council. Uh, in, in um, a few minutes, and that's not in, in, in contradiction uh, with further strengthening of our partnership, on the contrary. Thank you very much indeed.